Hello and welcome to TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. Today we have a very special guest in studio with us. I am your host, Kendall Eugene. Our guest today, he was named one of the 100 engineers of the modern era by the American Institute of Chemical Engineers at its centennial celebration. He was also named specifically for his trailblazing work in the development of uh, polymer ceramic systems for bone regeneration. He received the Kappa Delta Award, that is the highest honor from the American Association of Orthopedic Surgeons for his work entitled 30 Years of Bone Regenerative Engineering. Folks, he has an extensive bio and we will hear from him today. Please welcome our very special guest, Dr. Cato Lorenzen. Welcome to TV30, sir. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being here. I'm sure you'll be very, very, very busy, and we appreciate you taking that time to at least come and have a little sit down with us. Um, I tried to do your intro justice, your bio, but I'm sure I left quite a bit out. Let's, uh, let us know a little bit more about yourself as a layman, as a scientist, as a human being. Well, well, thanks. For, to start, I'm, I'm born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. My dad is actually, what's actually from, uh, from uh, St. Lucia, born and raised in, in uh, St. Lucia, and then came to America. Um, and um, I've now come back and done more work now in St. Lucia, I actually become a citizen, dual citizen with the uh, USA in terms, of, uh, in terms of my work. But I was born and raised in Philadelphia. I went to uh, Princeton for college and then went from there. Actually, I studied engineering at Princeton, then mm -hmm. went to, to Harvard Medical School and got my MD at Harvard. But at the same time, I sort of revisited my engineering roots mm -hmm. and uh, received a PhD at MIT. And then I've been combining work in medicine and engineering over the last, um, last 30 years. And it's been a lot of fun uh, and a great job. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Um, I'm a, I do shoulder and knee surgery as my area, mm -hmm. but also I do a lot of research in terms of uh, regeneration of tissues. I work on regenerating different tissues. Um, when you say that uh, you are working on regeneration of tissues, what exactly does that mean? Well, about 10 years ago, I started a brand new field, and that new field is called regenerative engineering. Mm -hmm. And it's a field that combines a lot of different areas to, for us to be able to make new types of tissues. It combines areas like nanotechnology that, that I work in, mm -hmm. stem cell science, uh, areas in physics, developmental biology, which is like how a newt or a salamander makes a limb and understanding that, um, clinical translation. These are areas that are brought together to be able to work on regeneration of different types of tissues. And, We've worked on regenerating almost every tissue of the lower extremity. We can make bone, we can make ligament, we can make tendon, uh, cartilage, we can make pretty much nerves, blood vessels. And so that's been the, the work over the years. Who would you say would benefit immensely from um, the work that you have been doing the research on for the past couple of years? Well, I think everyone. So I, I was at a national meeting about a month ago and mm -hmm. someone walked out behind me and um, started walking behind me, and I was wondering why the person's walking behind me. And they stopped for a moment, and they said, listen, I just want to let you know that, that your technology that, uh, that you developed is actually, was used to treat my leg. Mm -hmm. I had a big fracture in my leg, and we lost, they lost a lot of bone, and mm -hmm. they didn't know if they could replace it, and they used your technology and placed it in that area, and I, I'm, now, I'm now walking. And hearing that really warms my heart when, that, when you hear about that. But it's not just in terms of those areas. We think that for wounded warriors, mm -hmm. um, there's a place for our technology uh, for um, for athletes, hyper, especially high performance athletes who who injure themselves. We have an application, but but it's really for everyone in terms of the, the types of technologies we've developed. Hearing that, um, I'm sure that so many of them, and you mentioned the athletes, uh, you have in, uh, the sports fans who would see their favorite um, athlete go down with an injury, but with your technology could get that person back on the field, back on the court, um, in a lot less time than would possibly have been. I have to say, though, that uh, here in St. Lucia, we have um, our young college, the South Lewis Community College, and this is where we have our budding scientists, probably doctors for the future. Um, do you have a relationship with the college and uh, to share that knowledge with them? 
Right. Well, I, I came here last year, and uh, actually, I think I had an interview last year uh, when I announced that our, our, we have a new cooperation, cooperative agreement between mm -hmm. my university, which is the University of Connecticut, and um, and uh, Sir Arthur Lewis. Mm -hmm. And I said, we'll be doing new programs and doing some things together. And I'm very happy to announce and very proud to announce that we've, we've done a lot of great things. Okay. Um, one is, I, as you may know, my autobiography came out at the end of, uh, actually came out last year. And my autobiography is called Success is What You Leave Behind. And, um, and what, one of the things that I pledged that we would do is to place one of these books in every library in the country and one of these books in every school uh, in the country. And thanks to uh, our, His Excellency uh, Julian Dubois, who is an ambassador mm -hmm. to the diaspora, that's, been, that's happened. And uh, I just talked to him yesterday and he said over 200 books have been placed across the country um, in, in middle schools, grade schools, high schools, libraries across. And, and that book tells the story of how I grew up and, mm -hmm. and my philosophy in life. It tells the story about regenerative engineering and also gives some lessons for life in terms of moving forward. So I'm very proud that in this last year we've been able to accomplish it. Why did you select that title, Success is What You Leave Behind, for your book? Well, you know, I, I had 16 lessons and they, they're, you know, that of, of life in terms of, you know, how to, how to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. And the last lesson was about someone that I knew, a professor I knew. Uh, professor, his name was Professor Judah Folkman. And uh, interestingly, he, came, he, he, he passed away. A month before he passed away, he actually called me and actually came to my laboratory to visit. He wanted to visit and, and, and uh, meet people, meet everyone in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. But he passed away, and so I went to uh, his memorial service. And sometimes when you're at a memorial service, you can see what's important in life because there were three sets of people there. There were people who, um, who talked about his work. He actually created something called Avastin, which is a five or six billion dollar drug saving lots of lives. Right. Um, he has colleagues and friends, people that we, I, like me, who came to talk about, about, uh, about how great he was as a colleague and a mentor. Mm -hmm. And then he had his family. And his family were the people who loved him the most. They were the people who cried for him, the people who, who remembered them, him the most. And so that, you know, that just told me that when you, when you, in passing, it tells me about what, what you should be doing in life. The three things that are most important are making a contribution, mm -hmm. number two, colleagues and friends, you know, and, and, and mentoring people, and the third is, of course, is cultivating your family. But ultimately, um, the success that he had is what he left behind, not what he did. Okay. And so that's why it's called Success is What You Leave Behind. The book is available on Amazon? If Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, wherever finer books are, uh, five <laughs> books are sold, uh, and, uh, and maybe your local library here mm -hmm. in St. Lucia too. Okay. We'll take a quick break, and uh, when we return, we will have more with uh, Dr. Lawrenson. Uh, I would like to find out, though, for a student reading your book, would you like them to emulate you? But we'll do that after the break. Okay. We'll be back after these messages. This is TV30. Finance has introduced the Electronic Government Procurement System, EGP. The EGP system has many benefits for stakeholders involved in government procurement. And government seeks to adopt a strategic approach to its purchasing process. Electronic Government Procurement improves efficiency of procurement and enhances data capture. The EGP is innovative and will automate the sequence from notification, receiving and evaluation of submissions to final contract award. It improves communication between vendors and government agencies, provides greater transparency, and builds confidence in the vendor community through increased access to information. To participate, vendors, suppliers, and contractors must register on the electronic government procurement platform. EGP, improving efficiency and transparency in the acquisition of goods, works, and services. Welcome back to TV30, a presentation of the Government Information Service and NTN. Today our guest is Dr. Kato Lawrenson, and uh, just before the break we were talking about your book, Success, What You Leave Behind. Success is What You Leave Behind. Very interesting, and uh, the title alone is already intriguing enough for us to pick it up and read to understand 
some of your life and the work that you have done. My question is though, if a student were to read that book and would like to emulate you, what would your advice be to them? Well, well the first is to read the book uh, because the, the points in the book um, give a lot of good advice, I think, in, mm -hmm. terms, of, in terms of life. For instance, um, uh, if you look at the course of my, of my progress, um, it's been hard. It's not, it's, not been, it's not been easy. Success, great success, really means a lot of hard work and it's not easy to, to be able to have. Um, the second is that some of the sayings I have are in the book, are, I think, are important. Um, tough times go away, tough people don't, mm -hmm. is one of the sayings I have. Tough times go away, tough people don't. Tough times go away, tough, tough people, people don't. don't. Uh, the toughest times don't get tougher, but tough people do. Mm -hmm. And so getting tough in terms of you know, when things come, come your way. And also if, in terms of adversity, I, I have, there's a Lorenzen 15 to 30 percent rule. Okay. So 15 to 30 percent of the time when you go for something or strive for something, you actually shouldn't get it. 15 to 30 percent of the time when you go for something and strive for something, you should not get it. Because that means you're striving. Mm -hmm. If 100 percent of the things that you go for in life you get, that means you're not striving hard enough. But also if you have that attitude, if you don't get something, you're not devastated about it because you know it just shows that you're striving hard. Right. So then you're a believer of you need to work hard for everything in life. I think so. I think that nothing comes easy. Anything that's really important is going to be hard. Every now and then you win the lottery maybe, but the point is that everything, that everything in life uh, that's actually worth, you know, you know, worth achieving, actually mm -hmm. it, has to, it has to involve hard work. Excellent. And I quite agree as well. Um, we have a new academy, a new concept, uh, the Finnish Academy of Science, Technology and Art. That one is set to be initiated. Very exciting news. Um, could you elaborate on that just a little bit, on the idea of uh, the academy and, of course, the concept? Well, I'm very excited about this. Uh, I've spoken to the prime minister about starting the academy, mm -hmm. and I think that he's now moving forward uh, you know, with, for the country to move forward with the academy. In the United States, I'm a, member of the, I'm a member of the National Academy of Sciences, the National Academy of Engineering, and the National Academy of Medicine. In fact, I think I am the only surgeon in the world that's a member of all three of these academies. Okay. And the academies work mm -hmm. by doing three things, um, actually four things. Number one, they're advisors to the nation. They help give impartial advice to the nation in terms of you should go left or right, or should you build this road, or should you work on this hospital, or where the hospital should be located. Mm -hmm. They can provide objective advice that, um, that transcends you know, time and governments. So the National Academy of Science gave, uh, gave uh, advice to President Obama. They gave advice to President Trump. They gave advice to President Biden. Um, and they all took the advice because mm -hmm. it was objective advice there. So giving a, a advice and guidance to the, to the country is the first thing. The second is to really help pr you know, promote science, technology, and the arts. Mm -hmm. This country has an incredible tradition, probably one of the best traditions in the world in terms of science, technology, the arts, especially with, with the two Nobel Prize winners. Yes. And so this academy is an academy that actually promotes that and supports that and also creates opportunities for others to be able to move into science, and technology, and the arts. Um, the third is that the academy and academy members are, should be inspirational, should be people that can be, you know, people that can be, you know, mentor others but also serve as role models mm -hmm. for individuals. And we have a number of people here in St. Lucia who are doing great work and it allows us to be able to, to highlight them. And the fourth is it's, it can, it's, it's great for economic empowerment because of the fact that, that the academy itself can produce reports and, and look at methodologies to increase uh, economic power and, and entrepreneurship, which I think is a big fu future for, uh, for St. Lucia. Okay. So I'm very, very excited about this. Indeed, uh, we're talking a huge um, impact for the development of our island and a great assistance to it as well. How would you say that um, the academy would assist in um, possibly the development of our island and for us really here, the young people, because we have a very vibrant youth economy that is now going to be tapped into as um, 
had been uh, touted by the Prime Minister. So how would the Academy now assist with the development of the country and, of course, the country's youth? Well, one of the things that academies do around the world is that while the Academy are a group of, you know, a small group of learned, older <laughs> women and men who work, to, who work on problems, they also, a number of the academies have young academies, mm -hmm. where people who are, say, 25 to 35 become you know, young academy members for about five years or so. They're mentored by the older academy, uh, older academy members. Mm -hmm. They're provided resources. Say if they have an idea for entrepreneurship, they're provided funding for the entrepreneurship. Say if they want to be artists and they want, they need the time, protected time, to be able to really work on their artwork and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in terms of, and just concentrate on that. Yes. Young academies are, are organized to help support that activity and that work. And so it's, you know, the academy process with the senior people and the academy, their academy members, but then a young academy works with that group, uh, empowering young people to be able to, to dream. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what a young academy is. It's a, it's a group that's allowed to dream. You have, you're working nine to five and you have to do this, this, and this. But what if you had, uh, you're a member of a young academy in which you can spend two or three years, you know, not working your nine to five, working on your entrepreneurship, yeah. working on your artwork, working on and getting that certificate in, in electrical engineering or electronics to help you in terms of what you want to do in terms of your dreams. And so I think that, and I think that the prime minister is, is you know, embraces this too and understands this very well. He's, he's very, very you know, youth minded. You know, really, when I, I met with him on Tuesday, he really talked about the youth of, of St. Lucia mm -hmm. and how it's important that they are able to get to achieve their dreams. I think this is one way through the, uh, through the academy. We will have a few people asking the, the uh, financial question. How would you sustain that academy? How will it be financed? And generally, how are institutions like what we are speaking about, how are they funded? Uh, what would that answer be to... Well, they're, they're funded by various groups. Um, if you look at the National Academies in the U.S., mm -hmm. you know, part of it's funded by, um, by corporations and groups that want to perhaps uh, explore, may uh, fund an uh, exploration project in terms of uh, bringing uh, their company and bringing jobs to, to the location. Uh, they're funded also by, um, by grant programs, federal grants, but also national and international grants. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that, that happens by becoming a, an academy, a, a national academy, one enters the sort of national world of national academies. And that, that's also a funding stream that takes place federally, you know, that's, out, that's outside the federal government here, where monies can come in to be able to support projects too. All right. Now, we have to take another break, but just before we do so, I quickly want to hear from you about um, how do members uh, how would we qualify or how would we one qualify for um, membership at the academy or how would they get enrolled into the academy and also if the advice that you spoke of earlier or guidance of the academy is not taken what would happen well i think that there are a couple of things one is that the academy group itself is of the senior members will be a small group mm -hmm. maybe about five to ten people okay and they'll be you know they're they'll be chosen by the prime minister and the cabinet you know for this for the first group one of the important things about these uh, about these academies is that they have to be independent so from that point on the membership is actually chosen you know every year every other every other year is actually chosen by the academy members mm -hmm. and it has to be an independent organization and that's really key. By being independent, you have a greater chance when you provide an opinion that it'll be followed because it's an independent group without any political baggage in terms of, in terms of things moving forward. Okay. Now, what we find in the world, if we look at the national academies around the world, that's what happens. Um, the National Academy of Sciences, the National Academy of Medicine, you'll, you'll hear reports you know, that, uh, that, that come out. You'll see reports that come out. You're hearing the news. And, and quickly, Congress and... and uh, and leaders actually take up what they've decided, to do, to what they've said, and they, they implement them. Okay. We'll take a quick break, and when we return, Doc, we want to find out a little bit about the JUMP program. Okay, did some reading on that one as well, and it's something that I'm very excited about, so we'll speak more on that. TV30, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Dr. Kato Lawrenson. We'll be back right after this. I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? 
Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back to TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. Our guest this afternoon, we have Dr. Keto Lawrence in with us. And of course, we have been speaking quite intensively on regenerative uh, engineering, as well as a brand new academy that would be taking shape here very soon. Now, we want to hear a little bit more about the uh, program, the St. Lucia Jump program, uh, let us know what is it about and um, how can the uh, GEM program impact the lives and health of our people? Well, great. We, so the, uh, as a part of this, this alliance with, the, uh, with Sir Arthur Lewis uh, Community College mm -hmm. and the University of Connecticut, um, we've undertaken a series of new programs. And our first and our prior our centerpiece is something called the JUMP program. Mm -hmm. JUMP stands for Just Us Moving Program. It's a program that, that tries to develop healthy lifestyles and um, healthy living, mm -hmm. healthy exercise, and healthy eating. Uh, and we started it, I started it at the University of Connecticut about 10 years ago. And what we saw you know, in Connecticut was just a real improvement in the health of, of the citizens of the state, especially black and brown citizens in urban areas. Because let's face it, in terms of you know, the ability to be able to have a lot of exercise becomes difficult in urban areas. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of being able to have healthy foods, um, in, in America, you know, we have areas that we call food deserts. Uh, there are whole cities, urban cities, that have no supermarkets, mm -hmm. not one supermarket. And so there are these food deserts that take place where there's no, in terms of quality food, there's no quality food. Mm -hmm. So we've been working, we work to tackle that in the States. And now we brought this program to uh, to uh, um, St. Lucia through Sir Arthur, you know, Sir Arthur uh, Lewis. Okay. And um, let me just say that I think it's been a great success. Mm -hmm. We've partnered with the uh, with the principal of the school, and we've partnered actually with their nursing school, their nursing program, ah. to be able to create a train the trainer program, where nurses are are trained on on healthy lifestyle and healthy eating. And then they go out into the communities. That's part of their work in terms of being uh, students. Mm -hmm. They have to, there's a community portion of what they do. Um, and they go out to the community and talk to people about healthy eating and healthy lifestyles. Um, I just met uh, yesterday with, uh, with uh, Sir Arthur Lewis. Uh, and they're now going to create courses mm -hmm. for everyone in the in entire institution that they can take on healthy lifestyle, healthy eating, healthy and healthy exercise. Um, they also plan a workshop series that will be a more of a public workshop series for people to be able to get involved. It's really great. And then they, they, I've also met with the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. They're going to be involved in terms of being able to talk to their patients okay. about healthy eating, healthy exercise, and healthy lifestyles. You're considered the father of um, regenerative engineering, but it, I get the feeling that you're also very conscious about healthy living and a healthy lifestyle. Um, so you are in agreement that the JUMP program should be expanded here? Absolutely. It should be, uh, it should be expanded across the, uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see, as you may know, in terms of, uh, of St. Lucia, has, it's probably the, has uh, one of the five highest rates of diabetes mm -hmm. in the world. At one point, it was, like, it was number two. Um, so I'd like to see this country be as healthy as possible. Uh, but also, I think it's important to respect the culture, to respect the foods of the culture, and to utilize the, the, the culture and traditions and the foods that are taking place right here to sort of to construct this, this healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, before we close off, um, you'd like to see us living a healthy lifestyle. I agree. And I believe that is news for everyone that they should be taking seriously. 
However, there's something else I'd like to do if you'd like to see here, and that is um, a regenerative engineering course at Sir Arthur Lewis, because you sound like you are very close with the college. So is that something that you'd like to see um, implemented at our tertiary yeah, institution? Ab absolutely. So one of the things that took place yesterday, we had at a, at a big summit meeting with Sir Arthur Lewis in terms of moving forward, and we've agreed in principle to move forward with the first hybrid regenerative engineering course mm -hmm. between the U.S. and, um, and St. Lucia. Uh, it's going to take a little while to, to get to put together because mm -hmm. you've got there's some logistics that are there, but it will be taught, you know, part part, part taught at the University of Connecticut, part taught at Sir Arthur Lewis, and um, there's a great deal of excitement. And I could tell you the administrator, the senior administrative people at uh, at the school, are super first rate. Mm -hmm. They they immediately were on it. These are the steps that we need to be able to move you know move through, and we'll we'll take the steps at the University of Connecticut to move it through to get this this joint course approved and move forward to move forward what is the probability of it being um successfully established here and operating i i think it's it's very very high the key issue obviously is is you know bandwidth and broadband and having the kind of bandwidth that's reliable in terms of a course because when the course is taught down here mm -hmm. it has to be it has to the bandwidth has to be to get it to university of connecticut and the people students there and when the course is being taught at the University of Connecticut, it has to have the bandwidth to be able to be projected down, uh, you know, down here you know, in St. Lucia. Um, I think it's possible, but we definitely have to make sure that, that, that that's, uh, that's set up and right. All right. My final question, um, what are some of the benefits we would we uh, see or do you foresee in establishing uh, the um, course here? Well, I think number one, I think that it would give you know give students an insight into this new field of regenerative engineering. The second is I, I think that regenerative engineering is very ripe for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. um, I've started about four or five companies. I'm on the board of two major companies, one you know one in the U.S. and one in Ireland, um, and um, I'm hoping that it will spark a student to say hey, I think I, I want to work in this space and do something in regenerative engineering. Mm -hmm. We have a master's program in regenerative engineering at the, um, at the University of Connecticut. Someone may take that course, take this course here, the hybrid course as a junior or senior, and say, I want to, I want to pursue this and pursue a master's degree or a PhD, mm -hmm. and then come back to St. Lucia and maybe start a business working in the regenerative engineering field. Excellent. Dr. Kizu, I want to say a big thank you for joining us today. And I wish you all the best and uh, much success. And hopefully we can see the course taking shape and being established here in St. Lucia. Excellent. Folks, this has been TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. I'm your host, Kendall Eugene. Thanks for viewing.